In November of 2017, around 5 million people across the world will forego a 5,000 year old practice and that is of using their razors. But why is it so? Yeah, because it's no shave November, my dear friends. Contrary to one what might think, the concept of not shaving in a particular month rose quite a bit early. You can actually thank Plato for it because he was one of those who believed that there should be a period of time in uh, a man's life where he, men cultivate their beards and are not allowed to shave. But why was it so? Actually, Aristotle too agreed with this idea and in his Nicomian Ethics he describes, he says, no man can be trusted if he is without a beard. And for that reason, beard training and growth is as important as training in ethics. While he just wrote a sentence, there was nothing new about it. But the basic idea was that young men had to imitate their leaders who were all bearded. So they set aside a period of 30 days for these young guardians of Athens to accomplish this task. Of course, this was not called No Shave November as November as a month did not exist in ancient Greece then. And, uh, but who coined actually the term No Shave November? It was actually coined by Karl Marx. That was to upset the Burgess class and uh, he just wanted to people to go to offices or maybe just be in the society while having their beards grown. But then uh, he just couldn't stand up against them and uh, against those people and the movement died then. And in the mid 19th century, you would also see virgin voters or 20 honesters who would start to grow facial hairs in order to claim their right to vote. Yeah, pretty bizarre reasons. But then, yes, this is how things actually start up. A mo is the Australian slang for a moustache. And Movember Foundation has turned the no of November to mo of November. And yes, this successful marketing tactic has actually helped people to grow their moustaches across the month and across the globe and helped the charity cause also to be successful over the years. While this doesn't end here in November as there is December in December and uh, this is actually also to grow your facial hairs. After all this was a loosely knitted event till now but it has been gaining popularity over charity aimed towards bowel cancers. And uh, if you thought that this was the end, no, it moves on to January where you will find the January that is being celebrated by females all across where they let their pubic hair grow in support of charity. Beards, moustaches, keeping beards and moustaches, always they have been a point of discussion in the HR circles, haven't they been? Yes. The Job Center for Wisconsin actually says that job professionalism might not go well with you growing your hairs on your face. Yeah, that's a bit of a bad news. I understand that. But as a result of one of its survey, 95% of the employers' opinions to share that whether or not an interviewee could successfully fulfill the requirements of a job was based on their personal appearance. 91% of those employers believed that the job seeker's appearance reflected their attitude towards the company. And 61% said that the appearance had an effect on subsequent promotions as well. I just think where is the like hard labor and the intellect and aptitude going way, all the way? Like all the models are getting jobs or like going up to the VP or CEO positions. Oh my God, you better get trimmed more bros. In November of 2012, Google introduced four games on its Play Store. These games were based on the Movember themes and since then you would find major gaming companies who have been trying ways to get associated with this cause. Like in 2015 edition of the football manager you would find the profile of your manager in the game would start growing its moustaches during the month of November. Yeah that was pretty surprising. But yes it was not the only gaming company as FIFA also chipped in and then introduced Movember tournament in its FIFA edition of the games you could still start playing them right and uh, that was not all as sony also pitched in while introducing a decal shaped uh, moustache on its dual shock controllers and that was pretty cool and hit among its play store since its inception the movember foundation has become a 
member base of over 5 million people and with over 710 million dollars gathered in with, for the cause, it has become one of the successful charity movements in recent years. A similar one was ALS back few years. But what makes these charity movements so viral? If we ask the question, the answer comes from Sander van der Der Leiden, a professor in the Department of Psychology at the University of Cambridge. He argues that fundraising and awareness efforts go viral when they affect the way people think and feel in very specific ways. He looked at common characteristics of these viral campaigns and found that when people uh, see their peers perform an act of kindness, they feel compelled to follow the suit. Effective campaigns, they don't rely on abstract statistics just, but they would ask people to identify with someone who would benefit from our collective goodwill. That empathy can be contagious, especially when it is paired with emotional imagery. And we all know that witnessing others' generosity uplifts and inspires people, which actually creates a warm glow effect. Who Shave November as a month is primarily associated towards risks that are associated to men's health. And uh, one of the major risks that men are exposed to this date is prostate cancer. The statistics around which shows that out of every 100,000 men, 120 men report of this disease every year and out of which 20 people die. But amidst all these kind of negativities, there is still a ray of hope for all men and that is while sitting in their bedroom itself. They can help to themselves towards reducing or preventing this disease. What's the remedy that I'm talking about? It is about ejaculation via nocturnal emissions, sexual intercourse, or maybe masturbation, yeah. Uh, as part of the Harvard Health Professionals follow-up study, the scientists found out that men who ejaculated 21 or more times a month, they enjoyed a 33% lower risk of prostate cancer as compared to men who reported four to seven ejaculations a month. SPF or the sun protection factor is a measure of amount of time you can spend in the sun. Like a SPF 30 would mean that you could spend 300 minutes in sun without your skin burning. A similar factor is a ultraviolet protection factor or the UPF. That means the UPF 20 would mean eventually that the rays or the ultraviolet rays from the sun that reach your face or your body is reduced by a factor of 20. Incidentally, researchers in Australia found out that the similar number is being provided by the bearded hair of any fully grown bearded man. As an estimate, your beard drinks a pint and a half of your beer every year. So if you are a beer drinker and you are taking part in the more month of the year, it is a time when your beer would be drunk the most. Mm, by statistics alone, yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, to give you an estimate how much beers we lose to our beards, I would say that approximately around 93,000 liters of beer are said to be lost to beard hair in Great Britain alone. Yeah, well that may not be a bad news for many as it is widely known that drinking beer fosters hair growth. Now who wouldn't want that reason to surface? And uh, that might be one of the reasons why your favorite brand Carlsberg got too associated with it. Next please. Earlier this year we launched a high quality beauty series containing real Carlsberg beer. Beer contains vitamin B and silicium which are known to make your hair and skin look good. In support of a good cause. Many jobs across the world don't entertain an unshaven look to office. But there is one place, one destination, one uh, Messiha where you can go to and don't worry about it if you miss your morning look. It is the ever cool Movember office in Culver City. The office space speaks about of art from floor to ceiling. It is a converted dance studio and uh, while you enter here you would find a barber shop that is open for public and employees both. A built-in bar to cherish you on Thursdays and first Fridays. Oh, I, did I just not Beer. mention that and they take care of your dog? They have uh, pool tables, games all around. I think it's a pretty fun place to work, man. Just go out. So it eventually boils down to the fact 
or the question of how many hairs are there on your facial hair and that excludes your eyebrows and eyelashes because that is just a joke. So this man in 2017 in support of Movember plugged out all his hairs one by one with the help of tweezers and not razors. And he counted all the hairs all along the way, one by one, with the help of his counter. This is a picture of his remo after he's removed 1000 hairs. And this is a picture after 3000 hairs. So now you can make a guess of how much hair is he going to eventually remove totally. The count after 11 hours of strenuous effort comes out to be 15,744. You can have an idea of scale of amount of hair that we have known on our face. So that was it and if you would like to know more about different topics, you can comment down below. If you like this video, like, subscribe. Thank you for watching and tuning in.